All right, let's turn to the Martin High traffic stop. So this next story is the epitome of trying to exercise white privilege. So in Florida, a congressional candidate, keep that in mind, a congressional candidate in Florida was caught lashing out at local cops during a traffic stop. Y'all take a look at this. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, sir? Officer Baskin, sir, is the police department. You're on audio and video recording. The reason for the stop, you were observed going 57 and a 40, and you were on your phone texting while you were doing that. That was at Euclid and Fruitville. You don't need to point at me, officer. I'm not pointing at you. I'm pointing in the direction where it was. I'll just call the chief, officer. Go right ahead, sir. Can you I see your license? Right? Yes, sir, I do. Can I see your license registration insurance, please? Can you do this? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I still have a job to do, sir. Yeah, What's your name? Officer Baskin, it's going to be on the citation. Can I see your insurance registration and your license, please? please. Oh, sir, can I have How your paperwork? Seven years, sir. Can I see your registration, please? Uh, you're not going to give me your registration, sir. Can you me? I'm asking you if you're going to produce me with your registration. You want to have it on you? Look, go call the chief of police. Tell him how rude you just been to me. Play with this video. Okay. Can you call Marlon Brown? Can you call the mayor? Okay. They're not okay, though. Tell him what to do. Okay, sir. Are you refusing to produce your registration? Uh, I'm asking you if you have your registration. You're making career decisions. I want you to do it. Sir, because you were speeding and you were texting. <laughs> you know, that's Martin Hyde, a right-wing populist, one of those Tea Party MAGA folks who had the support of Michael Flynn, had the support of Roger Stone, that he actually thought that his status would prevent him from being uh, ticketed by the officer. You know, these folks always talk about back the blue until they're the people on the other side of the blue. You know, there's always, when it comes to Black Lives Matter, when it comes to police protests, criminal justice reform, what well, we stand with law enforcement. When it comes to storming the Capitol, not so much. When it comes to them being actually accountable for the things that they do, not so much. So Hyde has since apologized, and I'm going to read the apology. <clears throat> Just over a week ago, I was stopped by the Sarasota police for speeding. During the stop, I was belligerent and rude to the officer who stopped me. Much interest has been made and shown by local media, and many comments have been made about my behavior. I'm not going to justify my poor temper on that day or attempt to mitigate it in any way. Now, note, these are the same people that, when it comes to African Americans being shot by the police, they say, well, just comply. You know, why are you fighting with law enforcement? Just comply. When it comes to them, I apologize for my poor temper. Continuing. There will be some who will say it's not the first time I've acted out aggressively and on occasion when I'm challenged. In the political arena, that is possibly a good thing, but on my personal level, it's not. He is admitting that he is a crazy person who gets into fights all the time with random people and he considers it a political benefit as a far-right-wing Republican. I just want you to imagine any black person running for office anywhere in the country saying, I fly, I got a bad temper. I'm just going to keep my bad temper. He continues, I've apologized to the officer in question, and now I'm apologizing to the community as a whole. I'm going to do my utmost to behave better going forward. This is a grown-ass man. This is a grown politician saying, I'm going to do my utmost to behave better in public the way that a five-year-old would. Continuing, I'm not running away, though as that's not in my nature. There's nothing more I can say or will say on this subject other than I'm sorry for any offense caused by, to anyone. The most non-apology apology. Wow. I'm sorry for any he, offense he really that anybody like that? might have felt anywhere. Let's go to the panel. Kelly, what do you think about this congressional candidate and his apology? I, I think Florida's going to Florida. And this is peak Florida man, if you understand that joke. Um, it, it, it does not surprise me. Nothing about 
Florida surprises me anymore. I I have been burned in the past of holding that state to apparently way too high of a standard in regards to tact, in regards to behavior, in regards to morals and values and just common sense. I am no longer ascribing to those things when it comes to this state anymore, because clearly they have none of those things in, in abundance, as evidenced by uh, Mr. Hyde here. Um, it is unfortunate that the Republican Party as a whole is not going to rally around him and basically tell him to shut up and, and get in line, similar um, to how... Uh, the Democratic Party kind of shut down Howard Dean back in the day when he did that yah uh, scream in the middle of a, <laughs> what was it, a rally or a convention or something. I'll never forget that. Um, he was uh, slated to be one of the most powerful Democratic members ever, and he lost control of his emotions in happiness. And the DNC was like, no, you got to go. So the fact that the GOP is not even doing that for someone who was Basically, no, he was doing something illegal. And the, we have heard peep out of the GOP when it comes to this man and his conduct. Um, it is unfortunate that they claim to be the party of morals and values, and they are not holding this man accountable for not having either of those things. <laughs> Lauren, what does it say? But you are incredibly that petty for that accent. <laughs> Look, you know, we got to make sure out. people under... You're getting the real flavor to it. You got to season it properly and all those things. So, Lauren, <laughs> what do you think it says? That this 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 man, Hyde, will probably face zero consequences for what he's done. The same party that talks about law and order, the same party that talks about backing the blue. When it comes to a situation like this, they don't have the blues back. Yeah, he'll face zero consequence. Uh, you know, this really reminds me of Sandra Bland and what happened during her traffic stop in which, because she would not put out a cigarette, the officer asked her to get out of the vehicle. Uh, obviously, it's reminiscent of so many videos that we've seen where any sort of disagreement, questioning, sassing of the police officer ends in somebody getting beat up. Obviously, if this was Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, obviously, he's not a member of Congress, but still, if this was Ilhan Omar and Maxine Waters on this video, it would be playing nonstop on Fox News uh, over and over again in a loop. Uh, and, you know, with a lot of police officers and a lot of jurisdiction, that type of exchange would have led to, um, you know, something a heck of a lot more physical than, you know, her just standing at the window and continuing to talk to him. There's no reason to address anybody like that, whether they're a police officer or not. She does have the authority to pull him over and ask questions if he was texting on uh, his phone. I mean, it, this is not like some of these other incidents we, of course, hear of, of air fresheners in the window and traffic lights out and the backlight and all this other nonsense that people get stopped for. Uh, in a lot of jurisdictions, being on your cell phone is now legal. Uh, so uh, it, it is actually a right to stop that probably would have ended in nothing. He probably would not have been cited for that were it not for the fact that he was running his mouth. He was actually... Uh, he was actually extending this, this stop for no reason over a petty thing that she probably would have given him a warning on and he would have driven away. And it turns into, you know, a national viral incident because he's an idiot. So that's what happened with that. Uh, totally unnecessary and ridiculous. And in fact, you know, he was right in his apology. The cop was doing her job. So, Scott, look, we've we've seen the last several election cycles that for many Republicans, being an idiot does not disqualify you from uh, from <laughs> office. Uh, uh, well, what, is, what exactly does it say about our body politics? Or this may actually help him win. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was your question? Robert, <laughs> forgive me. Well, get to look, yet. <laughs> we got to at least pretend we're paying attention. <laughs> so, I, Scott, what, what do you think it says when something like this will actually probably help him in a GOP primary? Well, they'll, they'll self-identify with him. Your uh, your dialect you use, is that really how he talks, to, if you know? Close <laughs> enough, probably. Close enough. <laughs> no, you know, what I, what I, you know what? I'm very critical of the police when they act badly. I was impressed with this officer's professionalism because she could have arrested him. I mean, mm -hmm. in most jurisdictions, if you do disobey a police order, it's a minor arrest, but you could have been arrested. If you're traveling without a uh, registration in a lot of jurisdictions, you could have been arrested. And he wasn't inebriated in any way. 
He was just being an ass, right? And she continued to be professional with him. So he should have apologized to her. But as Lauren said, this was just gratuitous bad behavior. And the Republicans, while they may want to touch it and they may want to protect him, they're certainly not endorsing this type of behavior from a white female police officer who's just doing her job. I don't care whether you're a Trump supporter or not. That's just not going to read well or going to look well on social media. And so um, I think he gets away with it because of white privilege, but he got into it because of his white privilege. You look at him, he was just sneering at her and just gratuitously being an AWS. So uh, I think it's par for cause for white privilege. Had he been black or perhaps had the officer uh, uh, been in a different mood, if you will, it would have been even more egregious on his part. And so uh, I really think it's a tutorial on not only the expectation of white privilege, but it's a tutorial on an everyday stop, a normal stop, a routine stop how the police encounter people, whether they have guns or whether they're just A-double-S's on their day-to-day -day jobs. And it's just all unnecessary. He should have complied. That applies to him, because he would certainly say it if the driver were, were black and something bad happened. And so what's good for the goose has got to be good for the gander, especially when it comes to black and white folks. And just real quick, Kelly, we talked a little bit earlier about intersectionality. Uh, do you think that this aggressive white man would have had this same stance if the officer was not a, a woman in this case? You know, I don't know, because he's weird. And one of the first things that he said, um, just by her asking, you know, license and registration, mm -hmm. he asked, do you know who I am? And with that kind of <laughs> arrogance, it's kind of hard to, to pinpoint whether he would have said that in front of a man, woman, black, white, and different. Because when you are that mm -hmm. arrogant, it kind of doesn't matter. Um, it's less likely that he would have been disrespectful. But at like with him specifically, I'm not too sure. He just seems like an ass overall. <laughs> <laughs> an and ass Lord. overall. I love that. <laughs> And, and Lauren, just real, real quick, what what do you think has to happen in order for us to, have, to get some of these conservative white Republicans to realize the hypocrisy that they're actually putting out there when they say back the blue, always comply until it applies to them? Do you think they have any self-awareness of how they act? I mean, they see it, but they just ignore it, you know, and they bury it in the media cycle and Fox. So this will never come up. Uh, you know, there's nothing they can get them to realize the hypocrisy. The hypocrisy is absolutely stunning, uh, you know. It, this idea of back the blue, and then you know the U.S. Capitol gets attacked, and we have over 50 officers who get injured. And nobody says anything about it on the Republican side. It's outrageous. All right, folks, back to our Goldmark unfiltered video in just one moment. The video looks phenomenal. See, there's a difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? <laughs> 